All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're comfortable for this one because it's gonna be a bit of a long one. I'm gonna help you go through all 2200 plus games that are currently on sale for PlayStation's spring sale on the PlayStation Network. Now I've played a lot of games over the years on PS4 and PS5 that are both exclusive and not exclusive to just being digital only. And I'm gonna go through here and give you some of my personal recommendations on hidden gems and especially games that I feel like you may have just glanced over had I not gone through this uh, entire exhaustive list for you. So the way I'm going to handle it is I'm sorting it by price being highest first to cheapest. That way, if you're on a certain budget and you don't want to buy any games that are over, say, like 20 bucks, then just skip to the part of the video where games become $20 and under. I think that would work best. So we're just going to click in the games. We're going to let the trailer silently play in the background so you can get some gameplay, get an idea for how it looks. And then that way I can also avoid tons of copyright claims from playing the audio from the trailers. So what do you say we get started? And the first game that I want to recommend to you guys is something I never thought I'd be recommending anytime soon based on past games in the Harvest Moon series as of late. But Winds of Anthos, the latest game in the Harvest Moon series, I did check out when it came out and I was actually pretty blown away by it. It is way better looking than previous games in the series, especially after they split with Story of Seasons becoming, you know, the actual Harvest Moon games. But if you're in the farm sims, especially one with an open world take with a really chill and relaxing atmosphere, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. It is still a little expensive coming in at $39.99, but, uh, you know, be on the lookout for the physical version of that. And of course, take a lot of my recommendations here um, as recommendations for physical games as well that you may be interested in. All right, I noticed that Theater Rhythm Final Bar, Land, Final Bar Line is half off right now. This was one of my absolute favorite games um, from last year. And if you're a Final Fantasy fan, if you're a Music Rhythm fan, this game has everything that you would want from the pairing of those two things. Excellent music, an exhaustive list of different songs. If you're a fan of the series, this is a must play. At half off for the digital version, that's certainly not bad at all, but also keep your eyes out for the physical version. Now, this is one of those games that I mentioned where I feel like most people would glance over it, and I played this and was blown away. It's a game called Small Land Survive the Wilds. It's an open world survival game that you can play both online and cooperatively. I chose to stay strictly in single player and wow what a beautiful game now a lot of you of course will immediately think of games like grounded which have a very similar concept but what really made this game stand out to me was that it feels a lot more like you're really in a real natural environment it doesn't look quite as stylized as say a game like grounded and this game does uh, emphasize playing in third person for those of you that are curious but i had so much fun uh, going around and playing around discovering things in this game fighting off the wasps fighting off big scary spiders it's an absolutely beautiful game and a, i think a must play if you're a fan of survival games in a more natural environment and that's sort of honey i shrug the kids kind of style air twister is a bit of a weird one for me to recommend this is actually a port of an apple arcade game i know it's a mobile port i went into this game not really having much expectations and I have to say the thing I was most impressed by was the music. The music in this game is absolutely wild. Uh, you have to you have to hear the music for this to I don't want to play it cuz I don't want to get in trouble with any copyright here, but it's a pretty by the books sort of space harrier clone. Um not clone but like you know it's made by the original creator, so it's it's pretty it, it pretty much wears its inspiration on its sleeve. But check it out if you're a fan of just weird little games uh, with on rails and Space Harrier type gameplay. 20 bucks is pretty expensive for this. You can definitely see and do everything in, in this game in like two hours. Um, here's some gameplay here finally. There, You know, I hate trailers that take a while to get to the gameplay. The trailer will make this game look way better than it actually is. So just, just a warning there. But uh, maybe something to keep on your wish list if it drops into like the 999 realm. Of course, I have to mention one of my favorite games of all time, which is Res. This is Res Infinite. For those of you out there that own a PlayStation VR 2 headset, this is certainly a must play. It looks absolutely phenomenal in VR. Just be warned, your neck and shoulders will get thrown out if you're whipping your head around a little too much. But if you have yet to play any versions of Res, this is definitely the definitive version to play. Even if you're not playing in VR, I highly recommend it. I played World of Horror this past October, and wow, 
What a super interesting game. The first thing that will strike you is this game's art style. It's sort of done in this old DOS style look with animations and everything that just looks absolutely spectacular. This game was in development for many, many years. But the thing about this game is it's not what you expect it to be. It's not your typical point and click adventure game. It's actually got a lot of RPG elements. Uh, it does have a lot of choose your own adventure sort of uh, design choices to it. But it's really creepy. It's super well done, super unique. I'm just going to show you a screenshot here to kind of give you an idea of what the battles look like. So you can see you've got your sort of strength, dexterity, health, weapons that you have equipped, and then the, the battle is kind of happening in the center of the screen. I know it looks really overwhelming, and the first time you start playing this, you will feel overwhelmed. But man, give it an hour. If you can overcome the steep sort of learning curve when it comes to the interface, you're really in for a treat. Eternites is a game that I played just before October hit. And then I had to stop playing it as I switched into playing a bunch of horror games. But for those of you that are into really chill, persona-like dungeon crawlers, you definitely want to give this game a look. The concept is pretty basic. You uh, spend, you know, I'd say 30% of the game sort of up uh, outside of the dungeons interacting with your characters. It's sort of like a light visual novel persona type game with interacting with uh, the other characters in the game. But then other times you go into the dungeon like this and you fight all kinds of ethereal monsters and creatures the gameplay is very simple very basic the dungeons are also very basic it's just got a very light timing to dodging attacks and such but um, it was a really fun romp that you can definitely finish in a couple of sittings so if you're into these types of games i highly recommend you check it out especially because i think it's on sale right now for only yeah 14.99 half off uh, good old metal hell slinger or Hell Singer, rather. rather. Uh, the game's half off right now. It's an absolutely phenomenal game, especially if you're into music rhythm games and you also happen to be into first-person shooters and environments with big, hellish demons. Metal Hell Singer was absolutely stunning. It uses a lot of real uh, heavy metal songs, and then you're shooting to the rhythm of the music. I'm sure a lot of you probably remember seeing the trailers for this game. Uh, over the years and let me tell you it plays as good as it looks you do have to there is a very steep learning curve with this though if you're really bad at keeping rhythm this may not be the game for you but if you don't have a problem with that kind of stuff this is a must check out did you know that fanavision is back this was a launch game for the psvr2 so nobody blames you if you don't remember that this game came out a lot of you will remember Fanavision as that PS2 launch game, the one with the fireworks, the game that you see everywhere because it is, you know, pretty cheap, pretty common. And guess what? The sequel, Fanavision 20XX, is uh, pretty much the same exact game. It's just that it looks better. So if you're a fan of the original Fanavision, you definitely want to check this one out. It's only $13 or $14 right now. If you're looking to just chill out and play a really relaxing puzzle game, this is definitely one to try. You don't have to know anything about the previous game in the series. You can jump right into this, no problem. For those of you that are looking for something a bit more creepy and horror-esque, Bramble is on sale right now for $13.50, even cheaper if you have PlayStation Plus. They don't have a video for this one, but this is a stunning-looking game that will kind of remind you of a lot of the artsy games that have come out over the years. But what really sets this one apart is the folklore kind of emphasis on it. Um, and man, it's got some really creepy moments. So if you're looking for something that may look cute on the surface, but is actually quite scary and has its moments, uh, definitely check out Bramble if you're a fan of the horror genre. Blackbird is not on sale for too much off. It is $13.30 right now, but I played this on the Switch, and man, what an experience this game was. If you're a fan of shoot-em-ups and you haven't checked this game out yet, all you need to know is it's from the developer of Chulip, right? Onion Games. Uh, unfortunately, this trailer doesn't look like it's going to do a good job, but it's sort of an infinite scrolling shoot-em-up where you're just trying to kill a certain amount of things before time runs out. Very, very much score-based, and there are boss battles. It's super quirky. If you're into weird games, the music in this is one of the most... <laughs> one of the craziest soundtracks you'll ever hear in a video game. So if you're in the shoot-em-ups, really weird games and insane soundtracks, check out Blackbird. Here's another one that will probably fly under your radar. It's a game called Jack Move. Upon first glance, it doesn't look like it, but this is actually a super old school 
almost uh it, it kind of gives off a Mega Man battle network kind of feel to the fights it is grid based so the battles have a grid and you're kind of like moving around and dodging attacks as you can see it is a turn-based rpg you get the health down there you play as just the one character i think the one thing for this game for me i did find it a little too easy but man does this game have some style to it so if you like short rpgs with a sort of cyberpunky look to it that is repetitive it does have problems it's not perfect uh, but for only 13 bucks, you really can't go wrong with that. Check out Jack Move. Killer Frequency is half off. And for that price, I'd say this might be worth it. For those of you that are into slow burn horror games, the type where you're sort of sitting in one spot the entire time, sort of, and slowly solving a mystery and figuring out what's going on, without spoiling too many things, you're in a recording booth, you're sort of a... a radio dj host and people start dying in the town and the people that are getting killed start calling into your radio show and it's your job to try and guide them out of the terror and to safety characters can die they can be saved so there's a lot of sort of things on the line in this game and it has some really cool twists so if you're a fan of, of these kind of games and of a horror genre it's one worth checking out for only 12 bucks also, this is just a reminder for those of you that are enjoying this style of video. Leave a like, let me know. If you enjoy this kind of stuff going over PSN sales, I do this stuff all the time anyway. I typically do it on my live streams, but if you prefer the video format like this, I will definitely be sure to go out of my way and keep doing these videos for you guys. Just leave a like, leave a comment, and if you end up picking up any of these games, uh, let me know what you pick up in the comments below. I'd love to know, especially if it's a game that you saw me recommend in this video. Here we have Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. This is a game that I sampled a bit when it came out, and it looks like the trailer here is not really going to do a good job of showing us gameplay. Okay, we'll show you some screenshots. For those of you that are into 16-bit style, really difficult, really punishing, but super flashy with amazing animation, games that pretty much know what they're trying to emulate, which is, you know, Super Nintendo Sega Genesis style punishing action platformers. You should definitely check this one out. I was very impressed with it. There's a lot of these kind of games these days, but this one stood out above the crowd just because it looks so darn cool. So check out Moonrider. It's pretty cheap right now. This is one that a lot of you already know about, but it's sort of just a PSA. For those of you unaware, Castlevania Advance Collection is currently on sale for only $9.99. So you guys all know Castlevania, but for that price, for four games, how can you argue with that? Oh boy, this next one I bought the other night, and I'm like, oh, $10, that's a great value. DJ Max Respect. Oh my goodness. I bought this game because, first of all, it's $10, normally $50, and I've played my fair share of music rhythm games. I bought this and downloaded it. I was up until 7 in the morning playing this. It was, it was a stream where I was streaming for like 10 hours straight. I just could not stop playing DJ Max. And I will say this is not a good game to get into if you're brand new to the music rhythm genre. It's quite difficult, but oh my goodness, do you get incredible value out of this. Just the base game alone for 10 bucks, you're getting over like 200 songs. And all of the expansion packs right now are on sale as well. So you're getting like, I don't know, 20 songs for like a few dollars So if you're looking to add a bunch of stuff. But if you're uh, a veteran when it comes to music rhythm games or looking to dip your toes into something a little bit harder... DJ Max Respect gets my absolute highest recommendation. I love playing this the other night, and I continue. I plan on continuing to play this. Um, but be warned, this is not a super good beginner-friendly music rhythm game, especially because even a lot of songs on normal can be quite difficult. I gotta give a shout-out to my game of last generation. Of course, The Last Guardian. You do get this game if you have PlayStation Plus, but if you're not a PlayStation Plus member, it's on sale right now for $9.99. It's pretty close to what the physical copy is costing, but it's a great opportunity for you to find out, you know, what Last Guardian is all about if you maybe missed out on this while you had a PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, they have still not ported this or updated it or anything for the PS5, so it does still have frame rate issues, but um, yeah, still highly recommend it. Check it out. Yeah, there was a lot of people kind of a little bit let down by this game when it first came out, but if you're a fan of Eco and Shadow of the Colossus and you still somehow have not played Last Guardian, check it out. It's also a great jumping in point. You don't have to have any knowledge of Shadow or Eco to play this game. I kind of forgot about this, but it does seem like uh, I forgot that Res Infinite has a PSVR 2 version. 
So yeah, you can get, if you don't have the PSVR 2, you can just get the regular 999 version. But if you want the PSVR 2 upgrades, you are going to have to buy the uh, the $20 version. So yeah, a little bit of a weird discrepancy there with the two different versions, but just a heads up. Tamarin is a little bit of a hard one for me to recommend, but I did pay $30 for this game when it first came out, and that did factor into my enjoyment of it because I thought that that was a little expensive for what it was. But for $8.99, I think I can safely recommend this. Now, I will warn you, this trailer is going to make this game look way better than it may actually end up being for you. But it is a 3D platformer where you play as this cute little Tamarin monkey. But man, there is a huge twist in this game. I'm not sure if I want to spoil it for you. But I also feel like if you know the twist, it may instantly make you want to check the game out. They're probably going to show it here in the trailer in a moment. But uh, yeah, it has a lot of Jet Force Gemini um, kind of callbacks and references and such. So really cute, sort of rare you know, developer rare looking platformer, super cute little character, really natural looking environments. I love the first few hours of this game, but then something happens where I wasn't quite sure about it. I mean, I might as well, I might as well spoil it. You eventually get guns. Yeah, here it is. You get machine guns and the game gets a little crazy. Um, but that wasn't my only issue with this game. I had a lot of issues with the exploration of it. But for nine bucks, I think you might find something here that you'll have fun with for a few hours at least. If anything, it's really different from most platformers that are coming out today. Bloodwash is a bit more under the radar from, say, your typical puppet combo horror game. You know, the games that try to emulate what a PlayStation 1 horror game looks like. But I did play this one a year or two ago and had some fun with it. It's not as good as a puppet combo game, um, but it definitely has its creepy moments. You're essentially, from what I remember, you're in a dry cleaner or you're in a, a laundromat and you're getting like stalked by a killer. And it definitely escalates from there. If you're not a fan of being chased with really loud noises and stuff, this may not be the game for you. But I wanted to recommend it because it is a little bit more under the radar radar than these PS1 horror games typically are. I won't click into them here, but I will just kind of bring attention to the fact that there are a few of the Mega Man collections on sale, notably the Mega Man X Legacy collections. I recently played Mega Man X7 for the first time, and I'm not super well versed in the Mega Man games, but I will say that playing X7 was not as abysmal as I was expecting it to be. I actually had quite a bit of fun with it, so if you're looking to experiment, try out some of the, uh, or at least one of the most hated Mega Man games out there, check out Mega Man X7 in the Legacy Collection, because 8 bucks, how can you go wrong? You either hate it or you love it. We'll find out. These days, there's a ton of NES-style action platformers coming out, but I did enjoy what I played of Prison City. This game has elements of Mega Man. It's got... Well, this trailer here is, you know, it's not going to show us gameplay, so let's show you some screenshots. Um... You know, it's got Contra, it's got Bionic Commando, I think. It's it's Shatterhand, I think, is actually, if I remember right, the, the number one inspiration for this game. It was fun, it was challenging. If you're into these NES-style platformers, I don't think you can go wrong with this one for only 8 bucks. Uh, yes, a lot of the PS2 on PS4 ports are on here and on sale, and this is one of my absolute favorite PS2 games. I love the PS4 port of this. For those of you that are fans of Harvest Moon and if you've never played Save the Homeland, this is a really, really good version of it. The graphics are phenomenal. There's just something about this game. Anytime I think about playing a Harvest Moon game, I just want to play Save the Homeland. It's really nostalgic for me. I love the cel shaded graphics. It's just such a chill and relaxing game. Before the series really started getting overcomplicated, this is when you still had to do a lot of manual labor when it comes to tending your form, farming the animals. It's, it's before the series really started automating a lot of things and making things simpler. And I just really enjoy that. Uh, you can even tell from the trailer here, like they're not cutting, they're not cutting any corners. They're showing you exactly what you're in store for here. But for only seven dollars, if you for some reason have still not played this one, give it a try. It's a classic in my book. Here's another game that is one that you would absolutely kind of probably just pass by if you weren't aware of it. Uh, this is Genso Skydrift. Now, from the first glance of this, you probably can't tell what it is, but it's actually a racing game, and it's one of those. Uh, super hyper uh, over the top games with that techno soundtrack really fast paced drifting of course it's got a bunch of anime characters in it this trailer here is 
you know, taking a little bit to get down to business here. So let me show you a couple of screenshots instead to give you a sense of how colorful this game is. It's really simple. It's really straightforward, very easy to learn. But if you're into kart racers that emphasize drifting and drift boosting, this is definitely one to check out. Just be aware, though, this game is like hyper anime. The music is really over the top. So um, don't be expecting like a super chill Mario Kart style kind of experience here. Here's another one for you horror fans out there. Something a little different from what you might typically be used to. This is The Chant. I bought the physical version of this for like, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks, whatever the heck it was. But for $6, I think I can potentially definitely recommend this game. Um, it's a lot different in the horror genre. It deals with a lot of mysticism and your weapons in this game are actually like you're fighting with herbs and stuff that fend off like alchemy kind of stuff that fend off the spirits and the monsters rather than traditional weapons it is a survival horror game but it is all it, it's got a little bit of an open world element to it where there's a lot of backtracking and that kind of stuff can get a little old after a while the basic premise is though that you go to a sort of spiritual cult-like retreat camp and things aren't quite as they seem it's a pretty short game you can beat it in like eight to ten hours and i'd say if you're a horror fan where you feel like you've played everything and you're looking for something a little different this might be worth checking out but if you still haven't played a lot of the classics you might be better off spending your time with another game but i did want to recommend this one also feel free if you're uh, if you've bought any games on this sale that you want to recommend that I haven't covered in this video, please feel free to recommend them in the comments below and help kind of make a nice little resource here for people that are maybe looking for something a bit more out of the ordinary, maybe something that they wouldn't have noticed otherwise. I'm doing my best to kind of highlight some of the games that I've played and, and I'm passing over some that I, I'm, I figure most people already know about or potentially already own, but hey, games like this right here, this is a pretty different one. Etherborn or Etherborn. This is a puzzle game that is really chill, really relaxed. It's definitely a mind twister because it's one of those games where you're kind of like walking in a rotated world. Uh, I don't know what the best way to, to put it is, but this trailer does a good job of kind of giving you an idea. So if you like perspective based puzzle games, uh, this might be something for you. For example, let me just show you these screenshots, right? This gives you a, a great idea. And for only a few dollars, I'd say this is definitely worth checking out for fans of puzzle games. Just a real quick recommendation. Uh, it's only got screenshots, so I'm not going to click into it, but The Park kind of took me by surprise. This is a pretty well-known horror game, but if you were like me, you look at this image and you're like, oh, it must just be like a Five Nights at Freddy's kind of game. But no, it was actually a really creepy, well-done psychological horror game that you can beat in a couple hours, and at only five bucks. If you haven't tried this one out yet, definitely give it a look. And another one here on the same page that I want to recommend is Asteroids Recharged. Every once in a while, I like playing these remade uh, arcade style games, and this was really fun and one of the reasons I wanted to recommend this is because I played this for quite a bit for like a day or two and my name is on the leaderboard so if you buy this game you can kind of take try and take down some of my high scores and some of the time trials I think I did you'll see my name on there see if you could beat my high scores I think you might have some fun with it and just real quick they also made a breakout recharge that's another one that I had some pretty high scores in. so if you get the PlayStation version you'll see me on there see if you can take me down on that as well and of course, now that we're sort of into that realm of games that are $4.99 and under, we're going to start running into a lot of this kind of stuff. My goodness. PSN does get all really cluttered with these really terrible games, but don't worry, I'm going to dive through here and I'm going to pick out some of the best recommendations for you guys in this sort of like $5 and under tier. There's a lot of garbage in here, but believe me, there's some decent little gems that we're going to find and recommend to you guys. Speaking of which, here's Luminous Remastered. One of my favorite games of all time. I actually called this my favorite puzzle game of all time. Uh, Luminous Remastered is an absolutely essential puzzle game. If you call yourself a fan of the puzzle genre and you have some, for some reason, never played a Luminous game, I don't know what you're doing. If you're a fan of super flashy games with amazing music, Luminous is essential. The game is currently only on sale for like $4.50. This is an excellent version, especially if you've never jumped into the series before. Uh, the only thing about this game, and I will warn you, once you st start playing it, you may not be able to stop. Even when you stop playing the game, 
when I played Luminous on the PSP, in my mind, I was seeing Luminous, and when I tried to get to sleep, I would just see the puzzle blocks falling, and I was making combos. This is this is definitely something that happens in the puzzle drama genre, but especially for Luminous, and I'm not the only person that this happens to. The series is just that good. Please play it. All right, we've got a couple more Castlevania or Konami collections on sale here, but I want to point out the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Um, this one here is only four bucks, and you're getting a ton of varied Castlevania games in here. So let me see if they list which ones. So you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or sorry, eight Castlevania games for only four bucks. Can't go wrong with that. If you're a fan of hidden picture games, or maybe you don't know that you're a fan of hidden picture games quite yet, Hidden Through Time is a really good one to jump in on. I tried this game out uh, a couple years ago, and it did hurt my eyes a little bit. It's right before I upgraded my prescription of glasses, but the colors in this make it really pleasing to the eye, and uh, a lot of things are animated, so it kind of helps ease the monotony of kind of looking through pictures like this, right? But it's super fun, especially if you got kids. This would be the perfect game to play with your family and have them try and find the hidden uh, items for you. Highly recommend it. Really cheap. Nice chill game as well. Just make sure you got up-to-date prescription on your glasses if you wear them. All right, we've got another hidden gem here for you. I'm not sure what it means to be the premiere edition. I played the original version, but this is Lifeless Planet. This is only 4 bucks, normally $20. This game blew me away. I wasn't expecting much going into this, and I don't think the trailers and the screenshots, the screenshots especially, do not do anything for this game. But what I found was a really creepy, really atmospheric, um, I think it, I would kind of categorize this as a tiny bit of an open world exploration 3D platformer. I, it's it's kind of hard for me with, with tiny bits of horror elements in there too. It is, as the title says, you feel lonely, you feel super alone in this game because you are on a planet that is completely lifeless. Kind of. I'll leave a lot of the mystery up to you, but for four bucks, if you're a fan of these kind of experimental action, or not action, but uh, exploration platformers, please check this one out. The trailers and the screenshots do not do it justice. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. Alright, so we have found one of my biggest hidden gem recommendations i was originally going to upload my playthrough of this game on youtube but the all the music was copyright stricken so oh well uh, i wanted to help spread the word on this to more people but it is what it is however for 374 or three dollars at playstation plus castle on the coast a name of a game that would just you would glance right over this but this is an absolutely excellent 3d platformer it's really short but oh my goodness, is it just oozing with personality. It's got cel-shaded graphics. Really fun, fl super floaty jumping, but it just works. So if you're a fan of old school style, it's got parkour in it as well. If you're a fan of old school style like PS2 era or even N64 era uh, feeling 3D platformers, you definitely have to check this one out. You won't be disappointed by it. Don't be put off by like this sort of... Rocket League style looking gameplay here. It's just a little mini game they got. Super recommend it. Definitely worth three bucks if you're a fan of 3D platformers. All right, we've got one here that was requested for me to stream myself from one of my viewers on Twitch, and I'm really glad they did because this is a game I no normally would have never played. I think this is a bit more of a well known indie game, but it's called Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. It's only three dollars right now, but it's um, a really fast paced uh, run and gun game where you're just shooting zombies it's really over the top as the name suggests there's a ton of gore ton of body parts flying everywhere all as you're playing is like some italian mobster it's uh it's a pretty quick one you can definitely beat this in a few hours but if you're into these kind of run and gun games like if you're a fan of say alien hominid or something check this one out it's not something that was on my radar and maybe it wasn't on some of your radars but once you play it i think you'll see the appeal of it all right, I, I couldn't pass this by without recommending it. I know, not all of you are going to take me serious on this, but for $3, if you have not played The Quiet Man, you should try to play The Quiet Man. This game, yes, was a huge meme when it came out, noted as being, like, absolutely terrible. However, if you've got some friends, you got some family, and you're looking to have, like, an absolutely wild time, essentially watching an interactive movie, because there's not a lot of gameplay in The Quiet Man, 
but oh my goodness if you like movies with terrible acting and you know a game that kind of forces you to play it twice because the whole gimmick of this is you play through it once as the quiet man not being able to hear dialogue you can try and sort of come up with ideas with your friends on what they may be saying and then in the second playthrough you can actually see what they were talking about but for three dollars i think you'll have a, a pretty fun ride with this one if you're a fan of beat-em-ups to me this is like the sequel to the bouncer on the ps2 that we never got it's kind of like the closest thing to that just know that you're pretty much going to be playing an interactive movie for the most part and it's highly recommended that you at least stream this game or play it with friends playing it by yourself may feel kind of lonely because it's uh i think it's a game meant to be played with an audience found one here for fans of futuristic racers this game does have a physical version but my goodness for three bucks or a dollar fifty with playstation plus i mean that's almost free it's uh, a really difficult more like simulator-esque the best way i can describe this game is it's like gran turismo but futuristic it's not your typical futuristic racing game where it's super arcadey with like ridge racer style drifting this this game's pretty serious when it comes to the controls and it may frustrate you a little bit if it's not what you were expecting so kind of just my warning the drifting is very difficult very high learning curve but you can see here from this gameplay you'll immediately be able to tell if this is for you or not and for a dollar fifty or three dollars i mean darn if you're a fan of racing games just give it a shot maybe it's for you all right, we've got another one of my specials, finding some weird action platformer that you never knew existed. So we've got a Knight's Quest. The game is normally $25. It's on sale for $2.50. You'll notice the star rating is a little bit low, um, and I feel like that's about an accurate rating for this game. It's not amazing. Three and a half stars out of five feels about right. First thing you'll notice with this game is it definitely looks like a Zelda game. And it sure as heck does. It looks and plays like a Zelda game. But it also kind of feels like one of those games where it feels like it should have came out on like the PlayStation 2 or something. But here we are with a PS4 game. And it's a lot of fun. It's not perfect. It's got a little bit of like jankiness to the exploration. But if you're a fan of action platformers that have some Zelda influences, a little bit of like Ratchet and Clank in there, in a medieval colorful fantasy world, you can't really go wrong with a Knight's Quest for only 250 all right, so I'm going to recommend uh, the first game in this list that I have not played, but I just couldn't scroll by this and not kind of share it because it's only 225 right now. It's a game called Deadly Tower of Monsters. This is from the same developers that did the Xenoclash games and Rock of Ages, so that'll kind of give you an idea. Unfortunately, for some crazy reason, they don't have a trailer on here, but it's a game that uses a lot of 50s and 60s sci-fi elements and monsters, and it has a narrator that's kind of like, narrating everything that you're doing in the game as you're climbing this super tall tower for only two dollars i just had to recommend this this has been on a, a list of games that i've been meaning to get around to for quite some time now so had to recommend this one since it's on sale so cheap for only two dollars and nine cents i'm gonna recommend the one and only mobile game and i know that might scare some of you away this is a port of a mobile game onto home, home consoles but the reason why you may be interested in this one oops don't mean to play that is um it's actually a sort of like mobile game take on the elder scrolls games so it's got first person combat it's got like a little mini open world and i have to tell you from what i played of this game it was actually pretty entertaining and i think if you're a fan of elder scrolls games and you're looking for something a little janky and a little fun something a little different uh you should definitely check out raven sword for only two dollars All right, yes, we are getting into the super cheap games, which means we're going to have super weird games down here. And this is one that I'm only recommending if you're looking for a good laugh, especially if you get some friends over or something. This is Horse Racing 2016. Okay, first of all, the game is not good. But there is one thing that is actually really good about this game, and it's the music. This game has music that is so out of place, it'll just make you laugh. It uses sort of like happy hardcore music that is just... It has no place in this game, but for some reason, it just makes it way more exciting than it ever should be. It's a really basic game. Believe me, you're not buying this for the gameplay. You're just buying this for the soundtrack and just to have some fun, especially if you're playing it with an audience. So for $2, it's essentially like buying a soundtrack for music. Check it out. <laughs> but keep in mind, it's, it's mostly just a joke. But here's one that I am not joking about. 
this game is awesome. This is Mulaka. I played this game when it first came out and I was blown away by it. It actually uses a theme in games that we seldomly see explored. It actually tackles uh, Mexico's like mythology and lore and all kind of monsters that are based out of Mexico. It's actually really cool. It's a awesome looking game where you actually transform into animals. So you transform into birds and snakes and bears and tigers to kind of help you get around the environment. This trailer unfortunately takes a little bit to start showing gameplay, but I highly recommend this game for only $2. You really can't go wrong. They came out with another game in this studio called Aztec, I believe it was. I haven't played that yet, but this is a, you know, it's sort of like a, a very linear Zelda-like game. The combat can be kind of fast and frantic. You can move around really fast in this game, doing huge jumps, as you can see here. The highlight of this game is definitely the music and the boss battles. There's uh, there's some really great designs in this game, and for $2, I don't think you should miss out on it. I'm just going to highlight this one since it's one of the only like kind of big triple A type games down here in the $2 range. But Star Wars Squadrons is on sale for only $2, normally $40. Obviously, the physical copies are much cheaper these days. But if you're a fan of Star Wars, fan of Flight Sim games, I played this when it came out. It was pretty good. It's definitely worth paying $2 for. So yeah, just wanted to quickly bring attention to that one. Technomancer is also another one of those like Euro jank kind of action games that I would kind of recommend people check out if you're just a fan of those sort of like Risen, Elix, you know what I'm talking about. Those games, those action RPGs that come out of Europe and they're very rough around the edges, but man, you can definitely kill a fun weekend with these games. I played this when it came out and for the full price of it, it's like 40 or 50 bucks. Yeah, it was a little disappointing, but for $2, if you like your games to kind of have like a cyberpunky, steampunky kind of look to it, check out Technomancer. A lot of people know about this game, but I just wanted to kind of highlight it since it's so cheap right now. Here's one more that I haven't played yet, but the, the concept of Titan Chaser is just so unique that I have to highlight it. It is a game on my bucket list to maybe get around to one of these Octobers for when I play horror games. But for $1.25, unfortunately there's no video, but I think once I tell you the concept, you might become a little interested in this game. Of course, keep your expectations tempered. It's a super cheap game, normally only $5, but it's a horror game that really emphasizes atmosphere where you drive around in this car on a dark foggy night and you look for giant kaiju monsters you can kind of see that one off in the distance there and it's your job to guide them home you're not killing them you're not running from them it's a very chill very relaxing very eerie atmospheric horror game that i think if you're a fan of the genre and you're looking for something quite different from what you're used to titan chaser may be worth checking out all right, before we get to the final game here, as you can see, we have reached the bottom of the list here, down into the games that are costing like freaking 12 cents. And I am going to recommend one of them here, but before we do that, I just want to thank all of you that made it to the end of this video. Remember to like, subscribe, uh, and leave some recommendations below if there are any games that you picked up on sale and will help make this video a nice little resource for people that are looking for some of the better recommendations on this giant spring sale. So what do you say we get into the last game here, and that is No Thing. This is a game that is an auto runner. The trailer here, unfortunately, I think takes a little bit to get into the gameplay, but this is a game where it's more style over substance. You're essentially just running on a maze-like path with really trippy sound design and a robotic voice that keeps talking to you and saying the same thing. It's more of a game that you play for like five to 10 minutes at a time or probably no longer than a half an hour or an hour at most, unless you become completely addicted to this game. But if you like auto runners and just kind of like skill tests, seeing how long you can last running on this maze-like platform without falling off, I believe you, you have ramps in this game and like a very light jumping element like right there, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, you just want to react in time, not fall off the edges and see how long you can last. So obviously, definitely sort of like a mobile game kind of thing, but it works really well. And if you're into these weird artsy fartsy games, you really can't go wrong with this one. So that's going to do it, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hope you pick up some good stuff.